Hey everybody, Josh here with another installment in the series we've started on, I would say, some of the more unique, uh, maybe lesser known Silka products that are out there. Uh, last week we talked about the Hirabel frame clamp, um, and your responses were awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you for your questions, comments. We will make a follow-up video on that, because uh, there's really a lot of interesting stuff in there. But today I want to talk about one of the the littler things, the smaller things, both kind of, I guess, physically and uh, price-wise, everything um, that Silka makes. And that is the humble, or in our case, maybe not quite so humble, tire lever. You know, this is a product that, when we first did it, I think was fairly misunderstood and I think probably was best known for just being an $18 tire lever um, or in some, you know, a 18 euro tire lever, whatever uh, your currency is, it, it was an expensive tire lever. I didn't really want to get into the history of how this product came about, uh, you know, why we made it, why it's special and unique, and why it's pretty much won every independent tire lever test out there. I think uh, it's always kind of the same. Five stars per for performance, three stars for uh, price because it's more expensive, but uh, it just works better, and we'll talk about why it's both more expensive and why it's worth it. So price, value, you know, they don't, uh, yeah, it's more complicated <laughs> than that. We'll say that. Um, so let's start at the beginning. In the beginning, we had metal tire levers. I don't even have one here because we don't uh, want people using them in the shop. But metal tire levers work great. They just are not kind to rims. Um, you know, by the 80s, we had simple uh, tire levers. This is the original Park TL1. These things, I... I couldn't even tell you how old they are. Um, these are actually a little discolored from UV. These things are probably 30 years old. Um, Park TL1 is a pretty good tire lever. Um, it's a glass reinforced nylon. It has a fairly narrow uh, chisel tip to get under tight tires. And you start to see the problem uh, when we look at it in side view here. It's a little bit thick. Um, that's probably its biggest weakness, and with the advent of modern tubeless tires, um, it's not quite stiff enough or strong enough. People do break these, so these actually live in a part of the shop here say do not use with tubeless tires. Um, a lot of you out there probably have a set of these somewhere. These are my Rafa Pink uh, Pedro's Milk Levers. Those of you, again, old enough to remember, in the very beginning, uh, when Pedro's launched these, they were called milk levers because they were made from recycled PET uh, milk bottles. Um, I'm not sure if the modern ones are made purely from recycled. The, these are now nylon uh, filled or reinforced because the PET, it's just not strong enough. Um, I think it also has trouble taking uh, color, so I don't think you could quite get this color if it was fully recycled. Maybe it's partially recycled. Um, these are great. The problem is they, and you see the width difference, they're twice as wide at the tip, which makes them almost impossible to get under the beads of some tubeless tires, which tend to be a lot tighter fitting. So when we set out to make kind of the ultimate perfect tire lever, um, you know, we knew really two things. It had to be carbon rim safe. Obviously, you guys know my background, you know, almost 15, 16 years developing carbon wheels. Um, but it had to be narrow enough to get under even the tightest tires, strong enough not to break. Uh, and then it had to be rim safe for carbon rims. And so what we've come up with is this sort of hybrid lever. And we'll throw up a little CAD model here so you can see it. But essentially, it's a forged aluminum spine. Um, that is then jacketed in this, uh, it's a carbon-filled TPU. So it's a hard but not entirely rigid uh, plastic surround so that when you're actually going under the tire and prying it off, the part that's touching the rim is plastic. And it's a uh, very strong carbon-reinforced but non-super-rigid plastic TPU. So it's like the polyurethane. It has a little bit of give to it. And the reason we use that is that on the underside of the forging, um, it's actually slightly concave in shape. Again, we'll throw a model up here so you can see it. And what we realized is happening as you're, you know, kind of uh, removing the tire. When you first pop the bead off and you come in this way, you can think this back, uh, you know, kind of little delta shape of the lever is touching the rim, which is flat. And as you start to pry and come over the top, you're now working your way up onto 
the arc of the rim bead. And if the, tie, if the lever's perfectly rigid, and this is why metal levers can really damage carbon rims, you're now sitting on a point of contact. So all of that load, removing that tire, is going into a single point at the top of that rim. Um, you know, if it's a, a steel or an aluminum rim, you might just get a slight deformation there um, from that load. But in a carbon rim, that can be enough to crack it. Um, and, you know, there are stories aplenty on the Internet of people breaking carbon rims, uh, trying to get tubeless tires off. And so what we've done here is we've scalloped the underside of that. Uh, again, you've got this hard but not super hard uh, carbon reinforced TPU and it's able, kind of like the windshield wiper of a car, it's able to adapt and increase its surface area by conforming to the curve at the top of the rim. And then as you are peeling back over this way, you see the surface is becoming flat again and then that surface is, uh, is actually springing back out to try to distribute the load as much as possible over the surfaces involved. So we actually spent a lot of time on this um, it seems like a small thing, but it really reduces the peak stress um, in the rim at that point of maximum load as you're prying the tire off. So, you know, essentially what you've got here is like the, the strength, stiffness, and function of a metal tire lever with really the rim kindness and uh, I would say rim safety aspect of a plastic tire lever, and you're doing it at the narrowness, sort of the chisel tip width of a metal lever or like an old classic TL1 lever, which allows it to get under those super, super tight tires in ways that, you know, something like, you see that's more than double, about two and a half times the width, uh, something like the milk lever cannot do. So, you know, that was really the impetus behind it. Uh, a lot of work goes in forging tooling, plastic tooling, the parts are co-molded. Um, so maybe a little bit more complicated than it may seem at first. And that's how, you know, you get to the price. It's essentially like buying uh, multiple tire levers and one each of these essentially is a forged tire lever with an injection molded TPU uh, tire lever jacketing it, multiple sets of tooling, the whole thing. So, you know, it's, it's like four tire levers per tire lever. So last year we actually added one and I think it's probably one of our lesser known products. I don't think we've done a very good job of marketing that this thing even exists, but you know, we actually launched what we call the EOLO levers. And so it's one standard Silka uh, EOLO or lever with one lever that has an integrated CO2 uh, EOLO head in it. And so this really just tightens up the space involved, right? It's essentially the same size, uh, slightly bigger than two tire levers but you've got your CO2 inflator built right in. And um, this is a super simple uh, valveless uh, style lever. It's got a swivel head, so you can screw it on to Presta or Schrader. And then this guy screws in to the back. You puncture it, uh, which actually seals it. And then as you slightly, uh, you, you know, uh, unthread it, it actually begins to flow the gas. And so puncture, back it off a quarter, and you'll fill the tire. And so again, it's just a sort of a very lightweight, very simple way of, uh, you know, getting a CO2 inflator into your bag, your Matone or whatever you're riding, um, you know, that again is about the size of a tire lever. So there you go. Uh, Silka tire levers, not probably what you were thinking or expecting. Hopefully that was interesting to you. It certainly was interesting to me. Like I said, a actually pretty decent amount of engineering went into uh, this product that you probably thought no engineering at all went into, and that's fine. I get it. Um, but there you go. Let me know. Thoughts, comments, questions, please drop them below. As always, uh, like and subscribe, and we will be back uh, next week with another uh, interesting thing from the Silka lineup that uh, we'll share with you. Thanks for watching.